There is no peace for a child of Baal. You've learned this lesson time and again, as all who are close to you suffer because of your tainted blood. When John Irenicus fell, you had hoped for some sort of respite. But peril follows you like pestilence. The time of the prophecy has come. Five powerful ball spawn have arisen, leading their armies across the sword coast, slaughtering their weaker siblings and innocents alike in a wave of massive destruction. Like wildfire, panic spreads before the armies of the Five, and those suspected of being children of Baal are cast out and revived. Even in Soldanesilar, unease grows into fear at your presence. Queen Elysim urges you to visit a sacred grove where the ancients might shed light on your fate. You wonder what part you will play in the dreaded prophecy and how long before its culmination devours your soul. Only one thing seems certain. So long as Baal's throne of blood stands empty, Chaos shall reign. Wow, just unbelievable. It is still dawning upon me that Arenicus is dead and defeated for a final time, as well as having my stolen soul returned to me. My life sometimes feels like a tale told to children, a fairy tale that embellishes every aspect and the hero always comes out on top to win. Arenicus, Bodhi, Kalar Argent, and Saravok, all great threats to the Sword Coast and now all have been defeated by my party and I. I've been through so much since leaving Candlekeep that I am nothing at all like the naive girl that I used to be. And now I am deeply in love with the man that married me only a few weeks ago. I'm in bliss, I really am. We've remained here in Sultan Esselar where I am trying my best to get into touch with my elven heritage as well as using our time here as a sort of honeymoon, now that we can with my soul back and our enemies defeated. Though there were many who died in Sultan Esselar from Irenicus' attack, and some destruction to the city itself, we have also devoted ourselves to helping as much as we can, so it hasn't been as relaxing as it could be. This hasn't been a real vacation, but we are all sort of used to this kind of life now. The time here that Ajantis and I have had with each other has been some of the happiest moments of my life. We've really gotten to know each other in ways that I've never known anyone, and I don't just mean in the bedroom, but knowing the soul he is too. With my own soul back, I feel a real connection to him that I feel will never waver. It's like everything about me has been rejuvenated. I feel and sense things that I had forgotten about for those months without a soul. I wake up happy and go to sleep happier. It's such a strange feeling like losing your legs for long enough that you somehow got by without them, and then had them returned, and all the memories and feelings of having them all your life returned as well. You just feel like running. But despite all of the good things, it's been hampered about news of war to the south, beyond Am. I hate to say it, I really do, but there are rumors of Ballspawn leading armies and killing each other. Just when I thought I had gotten past that, it seems that I'm being dragged into it again. I cannot stay out of it or they will eventually find me here. The prophecy of Elundo might be coming true, right now. Though she was hesitant to bother me with it at first, Queen Elysim has told me that if I am to know of my place in the prophecy, then I should go and speak to the forest spirits and the old stone heads that are nearby the city in a secret grove. I decided that this evening would be the best time to do so. Help me remember what happened. The spirits of the forest await. Check through my possessions and spells, and once I'm prepared for whatever may come, I may speak to one of the, the stone heads. Speak to the gods. We've been here for a few weeks, resting in Sultan Nesselar after our ordeal with Arenicus and everything. 
It's been one long thing since I left Candle Keep, actually. Up to this point, this is the first real rest that we've had. Now, we were given an amulet of Seldarine, a reward from the Elven Queen Elysim for saving the Tree of Life. This amulet protects a wearer against all forms of enchantments and spells. So it is just slightly better than the previous amulet that uh, Ajantis was wearing. The Harper pin. Uh, well, seems that Jahira has gained in skill. So she's using a quarter staff right now. Sword and shield staff, sling. I would say oof. quarter staff for now. And she has abilities. She's able to summon a diva as well. Diva. That's the second person in the group able to do that. Her along with the Jantus now. And that should really come in helpful during critical battles. So we have to speak to the stone heads. That was a little cryptic, cryptic, but not as cryptic as typical. I was, I thought it, maybe it would provide us with a riddle, but that just seemed to be more. So something's coming, and I feel it. The stone set is such too. Hey, protections up them. Uh, our basic protections, please. should try to see. Use true seeing, please, Aerie. Ready and willing. Why would somebody come into Sultan Esselar? How could somebody come in here? But I guess with the war raging outside, I mean, there's powerful entities walking the land. Who knows? Well, that is protective as we can be without knowing what is to come. Who is this? So, I have found you at last. It was an effort to track you down in these woods. Too many old wards for my liking. But here you are. And just who are you? All that you need to know is that I've been given the pleasure of ending your life. 
I may yet mount your head on the wall with all the other ball spawn I've killed. I haven't decided. I don't think you know who I am. <laughs> but I don't understand. Uh, why do you hunt ball spawn? Isn't it obvious? I am ball spawn myself, dear woman. Not all of us have been wandering Faroon like witless cattle. Like you and pathetic Imowen and so many others of Ball's blood. Some of us have far greater aspirations. The time of Alondo's prophecy has come. These rhyming ghosts here should have told you that much. Great things are afoot. And your contribution will be your death. Okay. It has already been decided. I am Illa the Quick, child of Ball, and I have been chosen to perform this deed. You cannot resist us. So others have said they're dead now. We shall see. All right. Well, she is obviously a mage, and I don't. We're surrounded. I hear it. Again, like the fight we just had with Irenicus a couple weeks ago. Let us see about getting help. As much as we can, at least, anyways. If just to distract them would be actually the greatest boon we can get from this. Okay. And I will make sure she knows that I mean business. By hell! What is it? Elisera <laughs> the Quick wasn't quick enough. All right. And they're running. That was it. We didn't even need all the help. You asked for it. All right, so... Elven chainmail. Boots, she dropped. Ring. I can hold no more. Healing. That item has been dropped. Ring of the Princes. And we've had... I have these... Some kind of dagger. The minor enchantment. This woman, she had no idea who she's dealing with. Paws of the cheetah. I'm able to identify that. And elven chainmail. Uh, Ari, can you identify this, please? Sylvan chain. This light but strong mail is of sylvan elf construction, and therefore its elegance is only exceeded by its rarity. Normally granted only to especially brave elves. Seldom is this armor to be found outside of a wood elf tribe, and rare still on someone not of elven lineage. I am not sure. I mean, I can't even wear it. It's, again, not for archers. It's nowhere near as good. We'll just hold on to it and sell it. Nowhere near as good as what we have. For the glory of Helm! The protection offers that person just left. Direct me as you will. I'm back in the plane. I greet you, plane. God child. You who are of divine blood, I have awaited you. You've awaited me. And just who are you? I have existed since the first strand of fate was woven, a servant of the paths and the gods. I have watched your own path most carefully. You have? Our own servant, who was the mortal Alondo, spake the truth that became prophecy. It tells of your coming and of all the others who are the progeny of Baal. The spark of the divine rests within all of Baal's children, and the time for their joining is nigh. I am here to aid you, Godchild. Okay. Aid me how? I cannot interfere. I can only prepare you, Godchild. 
aid in your education. You who are most unready to assume your destiny. Most unready? I don't want to assume my destiny. I don't want to be the god of murder. But what do you mean by that? I mean only that you are unready for the possibilities that await you. Your mortal mind does not readily comprehend the power in your blood. I suppose it doesn't. When you were last in your sire's realm, godchild, it was altered by your own consciousness, without you even forming the intent to do so. You are not ready for the power. You must be ready. It is your presence which determines the outcome of the prophecy. Although even I cannot see it yet. When the time comes, you will be ready. I will make certain. What is going to happen? Power comes with knowledge, Godchild. It shall come to you in time, as your destiny unfolds. I shall see you soon. Until then, hold your heart close, and know that you are not alone. So, you just left me here. So, you have finally arrived. I have been waiting for you. Saravok, I never wanted to see you again. Saravok, what are you doing here? Get away from us. Saravok, by the sacred oath of Sylvanus, is there no end to you? Must your foulness be stamped out only to return evermore? What could you want with us? Eh? He's like a bad penny, this one. An armored, deep-voiced penny of most sinister evil. Silence. I've waited for Orin, and my words are for her only. Saravok, didn't I tell you for the last time in Hell? You did indeed, although that was no fault of mine. It was you that summoned me then, even if the words were my own. I have done nothing but attempt to reform myself since. Saravok, long defeated foe from the past, do we have to face you again? Are you trying to make Orin's life miserable? Again? As you will recall, it is your will that shapes our father's realm, whether you are aware of what you do or not. I myself am nothing now but the shadow you see before you. <sighs> Maybe you should just remain that way and stay out of my sight. Hmm. That doesn't explain what you're doing here. I wish to make a deal, naturally. I have little to lose, dear sister, and plenty to gain, as do you. And I have waited in your home a considerable time to parley with you. My home, what are you talking about? You, you do not know where you are, do you? You did not come here on purpose? Ha <laughs> ha! What a bitter irony this is. You who stumble about nearly blind to your true power, continue to survive while I, Saravok, am reduced to this. Bah! Very well, Orin. I shall tell you where you are. You are within our father's abyssal realm, sister. That plane was ruled by Baal and now shaped by the taint present in your soul, but no longer present in mine. You have been here before. Of course, I remember it. This is a... a cocoon of sorts. A miniature version of our father's larger realm. Sort of a plane within a plane. I assumed your mind formed it to protect you from the power of this place. Rather ingenious, dear sister. I wouldn't have thought you'd had it in you. Regardless, I spotted it forming and guessed at its purpose. So I came here and waited, knowing that eventually you would come, and that then we could discuss my deal. What kind of a deal? What could you want? What do you think I would want, dear sister? I wish to exist. I wish to be alive again. You can do that. Orin, after everything he put you through on the Sword Coast, after everything he did to Gorion, you're not sincerely considering helping him regain his life. The smallest fraction of your soul, my sister, given freely, with the taint of our dead father within it. That would recreate my flesh, restore my mortality. Saravok would live again. I killed you once before. What makes you think I would want to return you to life? I do not come to the table empty-handed, Orin. You think me a fool? You are stronger than me. I do not contest that. But I can help you. And that has its price. And just how is it that you can help me? 
There is the knowledge of how to leave this plane of yours, Orin. That is one thing I can give you. Although, I did not know that when I came here. No, what I offer you is knowledge that is much more relevant. Something that dates back to my mortal days when I was gaining power within the Iron Throne. Something that you will find most intriguing. I know where your destiny lies, Orin. I know where you must go to find it. Search about on your own, and it will soon be too late. The time of the old prophecies is upon us, or upon you, at least. What say you? I say I have a lot of questions to ask first. And how did you, just how did you come by this supposed knowledge? I gathered much of the old lore when I was alive, my sister. As you will recall, it was my goal to assume the mantle of our father. I am dead, perhaps, but the lore still holds true for you. Knowledge. That's all you're offering for a piece of my soul. Bah! Knowledge is more important than anything, fool. And what I ask for is but a spark. A spark of the divine taint within you. I will be no ball spawn. My own taint long gone. But I will be alive again. Uh-huh. And what's to stop me from killing you again after you tell me all this? Nothing, perhaps. Doing so would not return to you that which you freely gave, however. And what would you kill me for? Revenge? You had your revenge. Do you truly blame my old ambition? I would do the same again if I could. I cannot, however, and you've nothing to fear in me. Tell me now, and I'll judge whether your information is worth it. I am no fool. I struggled just to get here after you destroyed me last, and I know that events move on even as we speak. You have no time to learn these things on your own and I will never get another opportunity such as this. Is there no other way of restoring you? Perhaps there is. Any divine spark will do, no matter which of Ball's children it comes from. I truly doubt our other dear little sibling here has half the courage required, however. he He's talking about me, isn't he? Part of my soul will bring him back to life, too. Figured that out all on your own, did you? While well, the thought of harboring a spark of your sugary sweet soul for eternity does not exactly fill me with joy. Yes, it would provide just as well. I'm not as sweet as you think, Saravok, and you don't deserve a second chance at life. You killed Gorion. I killed far more than he, dear Imwin, in the course of my ambition. Ask yourself how many you have killed, or Orin. Are you so innocent? Was Gorion? I ask for no forgiveness. Nor would you get it. I... I don't know, Orin. He doesn't deserve life, but... If it's important, I'll give up part of my soul. You saved mine from Bodhi. You shouldn't have to sacrifice again. Well, I really, really, really don't want to do it. Especially after what he did to... Gorion. If you're certain, then do it. This is important. Ah, so Orin finds someone to take the blow for her. Are you sure, child? You cannot turn about later and claim Orin was using you. It must be of your own free will. I would lay down my life for Orin and more, in an instant. Always. Maybe one day, brother, you'll understand what that means. With a spark of you within me, I have little doubt I'll be prancing gaily through flower fields before the season is over. Regardless, I'll take that as a yes. One. Okay. Hey, no. Flesh and blood and bone. I am alive. <laughs> I swore I would scratch and crawl my way back into the world of the living, and I have done it. I suppose it's a lot better than Arenicus coming back, but just tell me what it is you know. Servok lives again. A foul act that spits on everything that is natural. I know you have your reasons, Orn, but I... I will never agree with this. I don't agree with it either. Though my sword and armor have not appeared, no matter. Without the ball essence to channel their powers, they are of little use. I shall make do without them, as I once did. Thank you, Orin. I am pleased. Don't thank me, thank Imowen. I would never have done it. Certainly. Thank you, little sister. Well, it must gall you to no end. I shall treasure your tiny spark within me. Hm. <laughs> you better. 
I don't feel any differently, though. Somehow, I thought I would. Did I not say it was only an insignificant portion? I suspected that doing it here, in this place, it might work. But I was not sure. It is good to see that I was correct, after all. You weren't sure that it would work? I knew it. You were bluffing the whole time. She... She could have died. How dare you put her at such risk? I did not get to where I did in life without risk, fool. It was no bluff. I knew enough to suspect that it might work, since our heritage was the same. But none of that is important. I imagine you are eager to hear what I have to say. The first thing I shall tell you of is how to leave this pocket plane that you have created. It is an extension of your will, Orn. It exists because you need it to exist. It is this plane which creates the portal out, but it will not take you where you wish to go. It takes you where you need to be, or perhaps where you believe you need to be. But I cannot give you the ability to make this plane create such a portal. There are many barred passages in this plane of yours that I know little of. One, however, I can open, and beyond it lies that which you seek. Watch. Stairs, the gate. The gate's not there anymore. I suddenly know that a strange, with strange certainty, that in the room beyond lines a challenge. I somehow know that I must face an aspect of myself or my fears, but I do not know what it is. Enter that room and face your challenge, Oren. It will be difficult. You may not want to do it alone. There is a spirit here which can summon these companions you require for your party if you require such. Regardless, once you have completed that challenge, you will be able to leave this plane of yours. It does not, however, take you to where you wish to go. It takes you to where you need to be. And I, as I said, know where that is. In my youth, I spent much of my time looking into the old lore of the dead Baal priesthood. I unearthed one of the old prophecies from an uncooperative sect of Syric, one that spoke extensively of this time now upon us. The Sword Coast will run red with blood, yes, but the battles will culminate in a great struggle within a city to the south, the Tetherian city of Seradush. Seradush? Okay. It is there that you must go, where the first step of the prophecy will unfold. Although, naturally, you must face your challenge first. Aren't you still a child of Baal, though? No. Baal's essence left me as I died, and that which has been given to me now maintains my mortality only. Some might still consider me a Baal spawn, but it is solely a matter of history and memory. So what will happen after I go to Seradush? Then the future begins. Then we will all see just how much of a role you are to play in this conflict, and if you can live up to our sire's heritage. How do I know I can trust what you say? Of course you cannot trust me. Why would you? Take me with you, Orin. What? You want to be in my party? Take you with us? So you can betray us? Stab us in the back? Why would we ever want you with us, Saravok? I once was sure that the old prophecies centered around me. Even if that is no longer the case, I know more about them than perhaps anyone. I can help you, Orin, with the challenge in that room and more. Of course, I do this for no selfless reason. There is power in your wake, Orin. I am sure I am not the first to tell you this, and there is no better opportunity for me elsewhere. Besides, you defeated me long ago. You have earned my respect. Think of it, Orin. Brother and sister, side by side. Orin, please reconsider. Remember the prophecy speaks of a hidden traitor in your midst. What else could he be? I have not forgotten that. But I thought that that... Uh, I thought that spoke of the armies that are all being fooled. I don't think that that's what it meant. We're, I, I control no army. There's five that lead the armies, and they were being fooled by one traitor in their midst, so perhaps six? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say, Ajantus. He may have information that we need.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.